One of the most successful and longest-running mission by NASA is the Voyager mission. Five decades after launch, Voyager would go off and miraculously turn on back, only to immediately send a terrifying signal. What has the Voyager discovered and why are researchers anxious about it? Stay tuned to find out. When it comes to one of NASA's most successful missions, one of the names you might never hear is Gary Flandro. However, Flandro, an aerospace engineer, played a pivotal role in determining the path of the Voyager 1 spacecraft. His insights and calculations led to the successful execution of the Voyager missions, which have since become iconic in the annals of space exploration. While working at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, in the mid-60s, Flandro made a groundbreaking discovery. He identified a rare planetary alignment of the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, that would occur in the late 1970s and early 1980s. This alignment, which happens approximately once every 175 years, presented a unique opportunity for a spacecraft to use gravitational assists to swing from one planet to the next, thereby saving time and fuel. The concept of gravitational assist, or the slingshot effect, involves a spacecraft using the gravity of a planet to increase its velocity and alter its trajectory. As the spacecraft approaches a planet, it falls into its gravitational field, gaining speed. As it moves away, it retains much of this added velocity, effectively getting a boost. By carefully plotting the trajectory, engineers can use this effect to send spacecraft on long journeys with minimal fuel consumption. Recognizing the potential of this planetary alignment, Flandro proposed a Grand Tour mission. This mission would send a spacecraft on a journey through the solar system, using gravitational assists to visit all four of the outer planets. The trajectory he proposed would allow a spacecraft to fly by each planet in succession, gathering data and sending it back to Earth. The implications of Flandro's discovery were profound. Not only would such a mission provide unprecedented data about the outer planets, but it would also do so in a fraction of the time that would be required if each planet were targeted individually. Furthermore, the fuel savings from using gravitational assists meant that the mission could be accomplished with the technology and resources available at the time. However, despite the potential benefits, there were also significant challenges. Plotting a trajectory that would take advantage of the gravitational assists from multiple planets required precise calculations and timing. The spacecraft would need to arrive at each planet at exactly the right time and in the right position to receive the necessary boost to continue on to the next destination. Any miscalculation or technical failure could result in the mission's failure. Moreover, the vast distances involved posed challenges for communication and data transmission. Voyager 1 also measured the intense radiation belts around Jupiter, which are generated by the planet's powerful magnetic field and its interaction with the solar wind. The radiation belts are composed of energetic electrons and protons that can damage spacecraft and pose a hazard for future missions. Voyager 1 detected lightning and auroras in Jupiter's atmosphere, as well as radio emissions that vary with the planet's rotation. The radio emissions are caused by electrons spiraling along the magnetic field lines and interacting with the plasma in the magnetosphere. Voyager 1 also observed Jupiter's other moons, such as Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, and Amalthea. It found that Europa has a smooth and icy surface with few craters, suggesting that it is geologically young and may have a subsurface ocean of liquid water. It also found that Ganymede has its own magnetic field, which is embedded in Jupiter's magnetosphere. It also found that Callisto has an ancient and heavily cratered surface, indicating that it has not experienced much geological activity. It also found that Amalthea is oblong in shape and reddish in color, possibly due to sulfur from Io after leaving Jupiter. Voyager 1 headed towards Saturn, its next destination. It arrived at Saturn on November 12, 1980, passing by the planet at a distance of about 77,000 miles, or 124,000 kilometers. It also flew by Saturn's largest moon, Titan, at a distance of about 4,030 miles, or 6,490 kilometers, making it the first spacecraft to study Titan's thick atmosphere. Voyager 1 was the second spacecraft to visit Saturn, 
after Pioneer 11, but it was the first to reveal many of its secrets and surprises. Voyager 1 flew by Saturn on November 12, 1980, at a distance of about 77,000 miles, or 124,000 kilometers, from the planet's cloud tops. The first clue that Voyager 1 was approaching interstellar space came in May 2012, when it detected a sudden increase in cosmic rays, which are high-energy particles from outside the solar system. This suggested that Voyager 1 was leaving the protection of the heliosphere and entering a region where cosmic rays were more abundant. The second clue came in June 2012, when Voyager 1 detected a decrease in solar wind particles, which indicated that it was moving away from the source of these particles. However, this was not conclusive evidence of entering interstellar space because there could be other factors that affect the solar wind density. The third and final clue came in August 2012, when Voyager 1 detected a dramatic change in plasma density and magnetic field direction. Plasma is a gas of charged particles that can carry electric currents and generate magnetic fields. Voyager 1 measured plasma density using its Plasma Wave Instrument, or PWS, which detects oscillations or vibrations in plasma caused by various phenomena. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 recorded a sharp increase in plasma density, from about 0.002 per cubic centimeter to about 0.08 per cubic centimeter. This meant that Voyager 1 had crossed into a region where plasma was much denser than inside the heliosphere. Voyager 1 also measured magnetic field strength and direction using its magnetometer, MAG, which detects changes in magnetic fields caused by electric currents or moving charges. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 recorded a change in magnetic field direction by about 20 degrees. This meant that Voyager 1 had crossed into a region where magnetic fields were oriented differently than inside the heliosphere. These two measurements confirmed that Voyager 1 had entered interstellar space for the first time in history. However, this confirmation was not immediate because it took about 17 hours for Voyager 1's signals to reach Earth due to its immense distance. Moreover, it took several months for scientists to analyze and verify Voyager 1's data before announcing this milestone to the public in September 2013. However, communication with Voyager 1 will not last forever. The reason is that Voyager 1's fuel supply is not infinite. Eventually, it will run out of juice and be left to wander the galaxy alone. According to NASA, Voyager 1 will have enough power to operate one instrument until 2025, and then it will have to turn off its radio transmitter and go silent forever. However, even after that, Voyager 1 will continue its journey into interstellar space, carrying a golden record containing sounds and images of Earth as a message to any potential extraterrestrial intelligence that might encounter it. It will also continue to be a legacy of human curiosity, creativity, and ingenuity that has lasted for eternity.